All right, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for this. All right, I got the controls. We're good, all right. Oh, this is terrifying. We're good, all right. Oh, this is terrifying. Um, uh, no, cancel? Can't, no, I can't. <laughs> did I look silly in there? Oh my, of course you did. Of course, I look silly no matter what I'm doing. Dean Owen. Sir. How you doing, you crazy man? I'm doing well. How easy is it to, to, to fly one of these? Uh, after the training, because they over-train to an incredible extent. Mm -hmm. But after the training, it's pretty simple. I could see that you have two joysticks in there. Right. There's no like foot pedals or... Just the right joystick or the left. Uh -huh. They are identical. They're just redundant. Okay. So whichever one you want to fly with, that's the one you pick. And if, say, this you're flying with the right one and you're not getting controls, uh -huh. the aircraft not taking controls, you just switch to this, to this one and continue to fly. It, it comes very natural. The muscle memory is very easy to switch from your right to your dominant to your uh, submissive hand. I did notice that when you took off, it's one button, right? And then it takes off like a regular camera drone. You just take off and then, you, and then it's waiting for you to go where you want to go. Right, it has two modes. Uh, they, they call it hover and cruise. I call it air, helicopter and airplane mode. Mm -hmm. But you take off and landing in helicopter mode or, or hover mode. Uh, and once you just get up, you, you lean it over, you, you put some commands into the joystick and uh, change its transition, then it gets into flight mode. With the forward motion, the aerodynamics of the fixed wing helps. Right, so for example, uh, if you're in the, the hover mode, yeah. it's very, very intense on battery and uh, motor temperatures. Yes. But when you lay it over and get into cruise mode or airplane mode, it, then the motors will cool right off. So okay. it's, you know, there's battery and battery usage and motor temperatures are two things that have to really be micromanaged. Tell me about this button, Dean. What's that's, that do? That's when all hell breaks loose and you got no other options. You pull the chute and uh, there's an explosive charge underneath the parachute and the whole aircraft will come down uh, on a parachute. But you have redundancy up to, you can lose a prop. Yes, uh, okay. it needs six motors to run. It has eight. Yeah. So each motor has two batteries for redundancy. Right. So lots and lots of redundancy built in. So we've got three PDO tubes, three GPS units, three flight controllers. It only needs one. I've followed you with my drone once before. Right. I didn't exactly know the capabilities of this machine and how it moved right. until I was actually in the moment. Right. What's your plan today? Where are you going to go in here so, uh, I, so I know? Just, we'll come up, do just a couple figure eights. Oh yeah, it has started. Oh my goodness. Stop and demonstrate the aircraft being able to pivot, just mm -hmm. stay stationary in the air. Uh, a little bit different than when we did our show last Ooh. time. I've got a little more wind, so I'm gonna need a wider berth on my turns. Okay. So that's probably the only real difference. Uh, this thing's pretty light, so wind has to be managed. It's very manageable, but it, it has to be managed. Are you gonna go very far? Are you gonna stay within the airport's so, footprint? Pretty much stay within the air, airport's footprint. It's okay. large enough that, and if I get very far that way, then nobody can see. So the point is to have a demonstration so people watch it. Right. So, Do you have a uh, radio in there <laughs> to speak with? No, I do not. Okay. This aircraft weighs one pound under the limit. <laughs> so we're working on radios and we're working on communication, but trying to stay within Section 103 of the FAA rules. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot that goes on with weight management and you give up a lot in order to keep your weight down. Radio is one of them. So you have to give, if the plane does come in, uh, you have to give right away or, or well, is the airport gonna let people know what's uh, going on? Because of the, uh, the graciousness of the airport and the staff here, they, while I'm flying, they will prohibit anyone else from landing or taking off. I think my drone could keep up with your maximum speed, right. but you're not gonna hit that maximum speed. Probably, well, it might with, if I've got the wind at my tail, it will, I've had an aircraft up to 75, 78 miles an hour okay. with strong tailwind. Of course, in wow. the headwind, I've had max speeds of over 45. Mm. So again, wind management. 
Okay. But yeah, your drone, I'm sure your drone will keep up with it. Yeah, and I'll, I'll make sure to only do an orbit when you're stationary. Okay. So that, because I definitely don't want to get near, I mean, I want to get close to get detail. Right. I'll probably get a little bit closer than I did last time, just because I'm used to your flight characteristics. Yeah. Uh, one thing I do want to ask you is about uh, rolling. Does it roll very well? I mean, I know it, I can, it yaws. I can, I can roll it. Okay. Much easier in uh, hover mode than airplane uh, uh, cruise yes. mode. Yes, okay. Because I didn't see a lot of rolling last time, which is sideways. Yeah. Um. In, in what they call hover mode, <laughs> uh, which you can get it laid over in hover mode, and you, know, you still don't have max speed, but it, it's close to what cruise is. But then at that point, you're still controlling it with twisting the joystick. Yeah. And then it, it rolls yeah, did. quite a bit. But when you're in airplane mode, which is what I try, try to stay in mostly because of battery and temperature management right uh then it doesn't roll it doesn't. so you yaw with a twist right oh, that's that's pretty intuitive yeah when you did this for the first time were you terrified no i wasn't really uh, the simulator is so real yeah uh, the training is so intense and so you know you're, you are dealing with an aircraft so you want to maximize training and i want right. to train but they really take training to an extreme level so it was actually pretty land. comfortable and pretty intuitive I think they would have to allow for an extra pound just for my diaper yeah. if I was ever to do that for real. <laughs> the, the, the times that have gotten nerve rattling is the first time I was up in high wind. Oh. Because you can't simulate that. It's much harder to simulate high wind in the simulator than it is in real life. So in real life, when you've got good wind, it shakes you up. It can shake you up before you understand what you're doing. And then, but then once you understand it, you know how to manage it. It's very manageable. Yeah! Oh my goodness! Woo. You okay? Oh, the battery's warm. Yeah, I went. I went about a, a few volts too low on this, but I couldn't not get the landing. Feel the. Oh! I, I might have killed the battery. Worth it. That was fun. You did it. I did it. One more flight. You going again? You not want me today. to do it this time? Not today. Okay. I mean, I got you if you want me to. I go, okay. Dry. <laughs> no, no. He's kidding. You're kidding, right? Of course. Of course. Okay. Some of you may be wondering why I used just a GoPro on the ginormous Cinelifter instead of the camera it was built for. Well, simple. It's flight time. I wanted to be able to stay in the air for as long as the VTOL did, so I used the lightest 4K camera I have. The GoPro weighs this much. And the Zcam E2 M4 weighs. Well, too much for my scale. Hell, just the Zcam battery weighs more than the GoPro itself, so it was a no-brainer for this flight. Big thanks to the Mayfield Graves Airport for hosting this demonstration. All of the airplane owners were very excited. Very exciting day, isn't it, Jason? Yes. Yeah! I bet you can't wait to see that thing take off, right? I just can't wait. <laughs> Jealousy. <laughs> I will put links to the Pivotal website if you got a couple hundred grand lying around and want the coolest flying toy ever. All right, ready, Dean? Contact. <laughs> Todd, thank you so much for helping me on this video today. No problem, buddy. I enjoyed it. Woo! You got license for that camera? Oh, shit. I'm Ken Heron. Does your drone flying look like this? Then you need remotepilot101.com. Link in the description. <laughs> Thank you. YouTube drama. <laughs> no, I did not. He, he let me sit in it. I'm, there's no freaking way. <laughs> there's no way. <sighs> All right. Don't break the carbon fiber. Don't break the carbon fiber.